Hey, what's up guys? This is a video on how I went about creating my uh, A to E uh, symbols, taking uh, metal real symbols and converting them to electronic symbols. Um, yeah, it's just a step-by-step -step of everything I've done. Hopefully I can help you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. A symbol. 3M double-sided black square foam tape. Double-sided adhesive, uh, double-sided tape. Optional metal tape. It's metal on one side, stick in the other. A piezo. Trigger box from Polycase. Quarter inch jack TRS stereo. Input. A Pentec single zone uh, RS5 trigger. Optional. Um, Optional if you only want a single zone, or if you're building a uh, ride and you need a bell zone. It also comes in a trigger box form. It's literally the same thing, just a different footprint. Again, single zone. Uh, I wouldn't use this for the bell because I don't think this box would fit in there, but if you just want a single zone um, symbol, you can just strap this on and call it a day. Optional, clear. Uh, what are we calling this? Transparent color car door edge. This, if you want to dampen the edge or protect your uh, sticks a little bit better. I don't use it, but it's an option. And you need a sheet of two millimeter thick PVC vinyl that we're gonna tape to the bottom of the symbol. Some kind of cleaning solution. Simple greens, what I use is to get fingerprints and grease. Uh, any grime off the symbol. This is a, I believe this is two inches in diameter foam tube. I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is, but you get it on, I mean, what, I, don't, I don't really know what the actual intention of this product is, but you can get it on Amazon. Uh, this is just gonna help cushion the, uh, cushion and protect the, uh, the trigger when we put it inside the box. So we're gonna trim this down and shove that into the, the, the project case. Also, I'm using, this is, um, well this product is actually for dampening sound in uh, auto repair, like if you're, if you're restoring a classic car or something. But it's, all it is is just single-sided adhesive foam. Uh, again, this is just to help protect the, uh, the trigger. All right, strippers, hot glue gun, soldering iron, power drill, solder, exacto knife or razor blade, and I think that's pretty much it. So, all right, first step, you wanna clean the underside with what I'm using. I'm using some Simple Green all-purpose cleaner. It's just like a, uh, I think it's like a degreaser. It's uh, it's not like it's not too harsh or anything, um, but just to get all the fingerprints and just grime that way our tape sticks to it a little bit better. Maybe don't rub so hard over the logo if you want to keep that. I'm not sure if it'll come off or not. Next step is to add your edge membrane from. You can use Goe Drum off eBay or Mark Switches off eBay. Um, I've had better luck with the Goe Drum. The uh, Mercs, in my opinion, um, require a little more uh, squeeze to get the choke to work. So I've just been using Goe Drum. And this one in particular has an extra thing you can chop off. Um, 
this is really only if you want to do 360 triggering. If you get two of these, you can connect them. But I'm going to use it one side, so this is just in my way. Trim that. And make sure the logos are lining up. Because I want to use the logo on the front as my indicator of where the switch is. And sometimes they are different than what's printed on the back side. So I'll put the center here. Pretty close to the edge, and make sure it's even on the left and the right. And just press that down. Alright, that's in place. Now we want to tape it. And then just go along the whole symbol. with double-sided tape. You want to make sure, if we get to the top, um, you don't want to leave any, like, um, what am I trying to say? You want to make sure the top of the tape lines up with the top, uh, very edge of the symbol, so you don't have any gaps uh, where there's no adhesive. And the same thing with the left and the right, you want it to go all the way to the, the, the sides. So you could just stretch it all the way out to make sure you cover it, uh, or just be careful where you're uh, lines that line up, or your edges line up. That's good. So, right here you see, you can't see. I'm overlapping here on the edge a little bit. I'm overlapping on the edge here a little bit and overlapping here. Then you trim it. If you want, you can go, you can just butt up against the next piece of tape. Uh, you don't have to, I usually just skip uh, about a, maybe an inch, half an inch, just to save tape, because tape is kind of pricey. And again, just go along the edge, well, make sure it goes over the edge, I mean. Trim. And flatten out any air bubbles. And then when you get to the edge membrane, you want to make sure you don't put any tape over that. You can see now my tape's already kind of crooked. But don't tape over the edge. That's the most important part. The edge membrane. The bell you can skip to, um, it's just going to get trimmed out, but if you want to, you can just piece your tape. And then when you get to the edge membrane, you're just going to pretty much just cut sections of tape to cover it, but go up to the edge. It doesn't really matter what pattern, you're not going to see it. Anyway,
And then also don't tape over this guy. Just put your tape right up next to it. Don't tape over the edge switch. I'm gonna do like a little try to cut a angle out of this one. And if you want, if you have the space, you can fill in the gaps um, with like smaller, uh, smaller thickness tape. Or for instance, I'm going to put it in between these two because my gap is a little bit bigger. So we have our symbol all taped up. Let's zoom out of this. Looks pretty terrible. Uh, and then we're going to trim this with an exacto knife. Exacto knife. Be super careful. Don't slice your hand up. I'm just going to go around the edge and use the edge of the symbol as your guide and just trim the excess. So after it's all trimmed, it should be clean edge. Uh, you do want to make sure you have a sharp X-Acto or a razor blade uh, because this rubber tape, all this whole process will dull these things out pretty quick. Uh, so if you have a fresh blade, that would be ideal.
All right, now you're gonna take your two millimeter PVC uh, vinyl sheet, cut it to size. All right, you get this stuff off Amazon. Um, it's two millimeters only because that's what I read on uh, some old forum postings, 1.5 millimeters seems to be more popular on Amazon. Uh, that would probably work, I don't know, but I just stuck with two millimeter. So, Amazon, it's like 25, 30 bucks for a, uh, like five feet, six feet, something like that. All right, then put that aside. Up all your tape, wax paper, expose the sticky side. All right, take your plastic PVC and just gonna place it right on top. Making sure it sticks in there pretty well. This tape's pretty strong, so it's not like it's gonna come up without you having to pry it off. Alright, then just to make your life easier, just trim as much excess as you can with scissors, and then we're gonna go back around with a razor blade to do some. Uh, Closer trimming. Exacto knife, flip it over, and then I'm just gonna carefully trim without slicing your hand or scratching your symbol. But you can use the edge of the symbol as like a guide. Be careful around the edge here because there's no adhesive holding it in place. The blade can get away from you and you can actually cut uh, deeper than you actually want to. For here, it's not a huge deal because we're actually going to trim above 
the uh, membrane switch. But let's say if you don't have adhesive here, you have a big chunk you're missing, the blade can get away and you can end up slicing into the, um, underneath the, you end up slicing the PVC underneath, uh, and it'll just not look as good. So for that, I'm gonna switch it to this side so I can see what I'm cutting. Again, this isn't that big a deal, but the edge switch, because we're gonna cut that out. But. And then go along the edge of your membrane switch and be careful not to cut this because you'll sever the switch and it won't work as well. You also don't want to cut this. Um, I like to cut, I like to leave this part under the plastic because it helps hold the wiring in place. But when I get to the edge here, I'll actually lift up this lip so I'm not cutting the green, the wire itself, but the plastic above it. choke exposed so we can choke or simple and then cut out the um, the bell area too
go up a little bit better. out, chokes exposed, we can still get to our wiring through here, and that's what we're working with, so focus that. Vinyl, double tape, edge switch, exposed bell, kills all vibrations, that's what we want. Now this is what I do, you don't have to do this, uh, but the way I adhere the trigger to the symbol, uh, I just use hot glue, so I don't have to drill holes through the symbol. Not that I'm gonna deconvert these, but at least now I have the option. Um, so I bought this metal tape. It's adhesive on one side and metal on the other. On the other. Actually as a, uh, the original idea was to get it to stick with magnets. And it didn't pan out the way I wanted it to, so I have all this extra tape, so I'm repurposing it. But, the idea is you adhere these to the bottom, and then you put your trigger on top of that with a hot glue. That way you're not melting the PVC. Then we mount our trigger, we'll just go just like that. All right, now we're gonna wire up our trigger, pick these project boxes up from polycase.com. Uh, they don't have holes for the jack, so we're gonna have to drill the hole in here. I use a step bit, uh, just make sure you don't make the hole too big for this to not fit uh, correctly. If you drill too big, it'll just, it won't have anything to clamp to, it'll just fall right out. So, drill a hole. So to wire up your piezo, piezo, whatever you want to call it, for this particular, let me get focus here. So you need a stereo jack uh, to get dual zone. And the way you want to wire up your piezo is your red wire, which from the sensor itself is going to the ceramic edge red wires that's coming off the ceramic, that's going to go on the middle uh, tab of this stereo jack. And then the black one, which is going to the um, the metal piece of the sensor, that's going to go on the far right. And then for your edge membrane, you're going to have one wire on the middle tab and one wire on the far left tab. Alright, so solder your wires on or use those quick disconnects 
And then we need to get the uh, edge membrane um, lead wires to connect to the actual um, membrane switch. And there's a couple ways you can do it. Let me show you. Here's this piece that I cut off uh, from an... Uh, so the, the edge membrane has this, this little black connector here, and you can buy these from the Go eDrum uh, eBay store. That's probably the easiest way, if you don't feel like mess with this. You can also crack open this connector and expose the two, um, the two wires inside and solder directly to that at the risk of potentially messing up your uh, membrane switch. What I do, I have these uh, these header pins from another project, uh, I think from like a Raspberry Pi project that I had. Um, so I just had some leftover um, header pins that I soldered directly to those wires on the, um, that I soldered to the, the quarter inch jack. And then I put on these heat shrink tubes just to uh, to uh, prevent any uh, bridging or um, shorting out here. And then from here, oh man, you can just connect like so. And we made our own little adapter. Again, you don't have to, it's just what I do. All right, and then this design, uh, this is actually how Pentec designs their uh, triggers. So I'm taking a note from their book. Cut a piece of foam, foam tubing. That's gonna go into the trigger box. Just, uh, I mean, you just want it to be flush with the the box is not not rocket science. We're gonna take some 3M tape, put it double-sided 3M tape, put it on the ceramic side. Peel off the back of that guy, and we're gonna adhere it to the foam. Then we're gonna take another piece of this is actually a sound dampening material for um, uh, cars, if you're doing like car restoration. It's sticky on one side, so just one-sided sticky foam. And we're gonna pr place that on the copper side, or brass side, whatever this material is, metal side of the piezo switch. And this will just help uh, protect it when it's mounted onto the, the trigger, oh, I'm sorry, onto the symbol, since we are beating the hell out of it and it's gonna be rattling around. So that's that. Uh, then you can tuck your wires in, reposition, and just make it a little more presentable. And then the next step is to stick this on our symbol and hook up our connection. Right. So you're going to fish your wire into underneath the um, the PVC plastic and make your connection to your edge switch. It doesn't matter which one's red or black, you just the switch is just making contact of these two wires, so the um, uh, the position doesn't really matter. 
And then we are going to wrap this over here. And we're gonna end up actually hot gluing it to this surface here. And there's a couple reasons why I choose to hot glue this. Um, one is I don't wanna drill holes into the, the symbol itself. That, um, I, mean, we are, I mean, we're pretty much ruining the symbol here, but I mean, if we wanna reverse it and uh, deconvert it, that's feasible and possible. It just might take some uh, time and elbow grease. But um, also you have like, the, the screws on the other side being exposed, it just doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing, in my opinion. Uh, the other reason is triggers will eventually need some type of repair, whether a wire comes loose or after over time um, from beating it the uh, and banging on the symbol that the ceramic can crack, uh, whatever, it could be a, a few different things. With hot glue, it's it's strong enough to keep the trigger in place as you're playing, but it's not strong enough where it's a, it's it's not permanent. You can easily take a razor blade and um, pry up the uh, the hot glue just to um, expose the other side to repair it, and then just put another layer of hot glue on there, stick it in place, and you're good to go. So let me get the hot glue gun and stick this bad boy on. It's dry enough where I can release that. So that's it. I mean, so if you wanted just a dual zone uh, crash symbol, you can just stop here. Uh, one thing to note is based on the thickness of this symbol, getting the membrane switch to act as an edge trigger uh, and not just a choke. I haven't been successful doing it. You might be able to dial in your module setting to where it'll it'll register this. Like if you can adjust the the uh, edge gain. For my purposes, I never use the bow sounds of, of the module anyway. So what I do is I just turn off the edge sound and then swap my bow sound to a crash sound. And then for the edge switch, I just use it as a symbol joke. Um, if you want to turn this into a ride symbol. You can easily do that. By slapping on one of these Pentec RS5 external drum triggers. This is, it's like 20 bucks, so you can get a pack of five for $75, I believe. Um, I don't know, just, you can get on Amazon. Uh, it's, a, it's just another, it's a single zone trigger. It's just a literally, it's just the same thing we just did, but uh, connected to a mono jack. And what you would do is you would stick this on your bell somewhere, and then in your module set the trigger type to uh, PPS or piezo piezo switch. And then you would use two jacks. This would be your bell. This would be your your bow. Uh, and same thing, you have your ride so sound and your, your bell sound. If you want just a single zone, like if you're doing a splash or a china symbol that you're not going to choke, um, or something that has like 
very little sustain. You can just get away with just using this and calling it a day. I actually have these on all my splashes and my two China symbols. Uh, it's just quick and easy to stick under the under the symbol, run your cable to it, and that's it. You don't have to do anything. It's uh, super simple. And that's it. So that's the completed product. You can tuck these wires in, make it a little more uh, presentable, but it's, I mean, it's underneath. You're not going to be able to see it anyway. And then, yeah, just hook it up to your module, test it out, make sure it's working as intended. If it's not working, you might have a, a loose connection in there or, um, or you wired something backwards. But yeah, hope this helps.